Hello and welcome to LearnDigitalDesign.com. This will be a continuation of a series we're doing on learning to create an avatar image. If you haven't seen the previous tutorials, you need to uh, back up and go view those first. Uh, you can find them on our website at www.LearnDigitalDesign.com. And a lot of times you'll find out that the part that you hate the most as you're working on your image turns out to be the, your favorite part later on. Right now what I'm actually doing is we've got a bunch of transparencies here. And I've got two transparencies overlapping one another. And they're not fully transparent so it looks like they're shining through each other. So I'm creating a solid object that doesn't have any transparency on it at all. And I'm going to place it behind or in between the two transparencies. You can see those two transparencies uh, where the, the shine on the upper ab above the lip interferes with the shadow underneath the nose and this solid object here is just going to go between those two and act kind of as a buffer so that you do not see the shine coming through the shadow on the nose so that's all this is went too far we need to back up one alright now see you just see the shadow on the nose and the shine on the uh, area between the lip and the nose is underneath that area now and you know we have other objects that are being interfered with here that we're gonna have to grab and bring to the top let's get that out of the way it looks terrible, doesn't it? It looks like she has a bad cold or something, and uh, she forgot to wipe her nose. But trust me, it turns out good. Blurs, gradients. Don't forget. Okay, we didn't even apply a gradient to this one. Just went ahead with a blur, and it already looks better. The shine on the chin is an important area. Without this, it's just not going to look right. So, once again, we're going to get a sample color from the uh, from the model. Then, with gradients and blurs, we're going to make it look just like it does, or as close to it as we can uh, in the model. Give it a little blur. There we go. Um, you know, we're pretty far into this video now, but uh, if you notice, I just pulled that fill and stroke panel up pretty swiftly. And the way I do that is just push Control Shift F. Excuse me, Control Shift F brings up the the fill and stroke panel. The great thing about Inkscape is almost everything is has hotkeys. What I'm doing here is I'm stretching out this uh, object because on the model the shine area kinda lists to the right a little bit or to the left of her face our right her left so I'm just trying to emulate what I see in the model and we're fast approaching the uh, fun part of, of this type of uh, drawing or this type of uh, graphic and the fun part is when things look good and you know that you're gonna end up with a good drawing or a good graphic and you're confident of that and now it's just time to uh, make things look good and tweak, tweak everything and we're not quite there yet um, but we're approaching that and just look forward to that time when you get to the point to where hey you know this is gonna look good you're excited about it you can just uh, work on it with confidence that this is gonna look good and just make it better and better part of the reason that she doesn't quite look right right now is there's a there are a lot of shadows on the lips and some light areas in the lips 
and there's some shadows around the corner of the mouth where her mouth kind of turns up a little bit. That's why on the on the uh, canvas image it just looks like she uh, is faking a half smile. When on the model, obviously she's really smiling. This little area right here is a lighter area. And little details like this are going to really make your image stand out as looking realistic. I wouldn't say that I'm at the level where I could create an image with Inkscape that looked like a photo. However, there are artists out there who certainly can. And uh, you wouldn't know that their images were SVG files unless someone told you or you actually had the file. You wouldn't believe how long it took me to figure out that I needed to do this uh, outline around the outside of the head. I tried to many a time to uh, create uh, an avatar image or whatnot, and I did create some, but they just didn't look quite right until I learned that little trick. So that little trick right there is worth its weight in gold as far as tracing goes, and I'm sure that I'm not the first one to have figured it out, but didn't learn it from anybody else. I figured it out on my own. Now these shadow areas on the lips, although small, are very important because like I said before, your lips and around your, around your mouth and also around your eyes for that matter convey what you're thinking. They are a billboard to your mind and the human brain can translate that and it's very efficient at it so if you do, if you do not do it exactly right and get these get these right then your image is never going to look right it's never going to look like the model so be very careful right here and take your time at this step we've got this shine here think that this one will turn out really well with a blur on it. just about done here. I think we've got a couple more little areas here that need some shadow. And of course you are welcome when I'm going through this kind of monotonous parts of the video to fast forward ahead. I'd rather you fast forward ahead than me fast forward ahead. Because if I fast forward ahead, then you're not learning anything. But if you fast forward ahead, then you're choosing to fast forward ahead and you're acknowledging that you already know what I'm trying to say or you don't need to watch it. Which is fine. I'm not saying that you don't, you don't need to fast forward it. I just want to give you the option to listen to everything I have to say. And Of course, I'm trying to fill these... Uh, monotonous parts where I just do the same thing over and over again with with something of value and some of my insight as a designer. <laughs> 